On today's episode, we're stripping down the clear bay. So we're finally getting into something other than body work. Because whilst I'm on my home stretch with that and I've, I've got everything there and I'm smashing it out, I just, uh, to be honest, I just, I just started losing interest in doing it because every week I'd come back and body work is very monotonous and welding. It just seemed like I was doing the same thing over and over again. So I needed something to switch it up. So we're gonna strip this down, put everything I need to do the engine so we can smash this out and then by the time I finish doing the engine I'll be sick of measuring things and sick of talking bolts up and that means when I get back into the bodywork I'll be more enthused and I'll just be overall more enjoyable. So let me show you the setup and then we're going to get straight into it. Start pulling things apart so we can get this block to the machine shop, get it machined and get it back and start putting it all back together which won't be in this episode. This episode will just cover disassembly I'm quite busy this week and today is really the only day I get to work on the Falcon before going back to work. So, here's the setup. So here's the setup. Engine, sitting here. I've got my little trolley with all the tools on it. And right over here, we have the bench where I'll lay everything down on. I've got a whole bunch of these from Kmart to put all the nuts and bolts into and, and label them. I've also got the drawer with all the new parts in it, the new bolts and all the cool fun stuff. Up there, I've got a whole bunch of new parts there as well. So, that's a little light because not much direct light in here. And then pushed over in the back corner is a dirty, dirty Chev engine. Does anyone want to buy a Chev engine? So that's the situation. We're in the little office room thingy that I built in the warehouse. Um, speaking of, so we're just basically on the other side of the engine master wall of speed. Got to figure out, should I put something on this wall too? I feel like there should be a massive painting on this wall or something like that. What should be painted on there? I don't know. Leave a comment. Tell me what I should put on that wall. And I guess I'll put it on there. But let's start stripping this apart and see what we find. Got all the pistons out here. I've just gone through and I've checked all the bearings to go through and make sure there's no bearings that are totally cooked. Again, doesn't really matter because everything's getting replaced, but it's just nice to know. And they're all pretty good. There's one or two that look like this. I'll just get a little close up. Bit of a line going through the center of that one. Same on its counterpart. But where that piston, that's piston number six, runs along the crank. There's no signs on the crank of any damage or anything going on there. So, pretty happy with that. And on the crank, spins nice and freely. The end plays good. 
So there's no issues with, I'm gonna say that there's no issues with these bearings here. I'm gonna take these off now. I've already taken the bolts out. I'll take these off, check out the bearings. But I'm gonna say there is no issues here whatsoever. There's nothing wrong with the crank face. So that's all good. Go ahead now, pull out the crank. I'll actually move all this out of the way so I can put the crank there. And we'll check out all the main bearings. Bare block. All that's left to do now is to take out take out these expansion plugs or Welsh plugs on the side. And it's off to the machine shop. I've just noticed on these main bearings. Now I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up. I caught the faint glimpse of the Ford logo there, and there's uh right on the edge there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says 73. Or is it 75? Yeah, it says 75. So there's some numbers there and 75. I can't see because that scratch mark is in the in the way. So that means these are the original bearings from 75 when I'm guessing this engine was made. So this has never had bearings put into it. Uh, they're not too bad. They're not, there's no real big marks on them. There's no gouging, there's no signs of overheating or anything like that. So it's had a pretty easy life. So that's it for this week's episode. It's just a super quick one, stripping down the engine. Like I said, I've only got one day this entire week off to come in here and play. So I thought I'd get, get the engine done so at least I can take it to the engine builders. It's only been one day of not working on this and I'm already kind of keen to get back into doing some of the panel work. I mean, that roof is pretty much there. It's got a little bit of prep to do underneath it and she can go back on. After another day of working on the engine, I'll be, I'll be real keen to get back into this. Hope you like the video. I actually have no idea what I'm talking about when going through with that stuff. I've never rebuilt a Clevo before. And the last time I actually rebuilt an engine was back in trade school over 10 years ago. So I'm learning at the same time as you. I'm just going through, I'm reading books on what to look out for and, and what to do when doing the Clevo. So there are other more informative videos out there, but I'm just having a crack. So see, we'll see how we go on the next episode when it's all back and we'll put them back together.